Greetings guys from Dover, Delaware. Chris VA Travels. Shot up here to visit the home of John Dickinson, another founding father, uh, Delaware governor, also Pennsylvania governor, and uh, going to uh, take a tour of his home. And uh, yeah, as usual, I'm getting here uh, just on time. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna rush to meet, meet the guide up there. Uh, all right, so yeah, check this place out. Okay, all right, I'm gonna do my walk around. I just took the house tour, no filming inside. Uh, they did let me take pictures, so I'll, I'll put those up. And yeah, it's a nice looking house. A uh, traditional uh, brick Georgian style house from the time, built in 1740, so pretty old actually. And you'll see the stretcher header, uh, stretcher header pattern, the burnt headers uh, glazed over to give it that shimmering look when the sun was, uh, when the sun hit it. And it looks like they maybe had some sort of portico around the door, maybe it looks like. But uh, yeah, so built 1740, the add-on right here, it's the formal dining room, 1793. And uh, this is a winter kitchen uh, to the far left. And yeah, they had an uh, outdoor uh, kitchen, but they don't know exactly where. It wouldn't have been too far from the main house here. But yeah, you'll see plenty of outbuildings. These are all reconstructions built of, uh, off of information that they had from the time. And this thing uh, caught fire in 1804, pretty, pretty heavily damaged. So let me go ahead and uh, just do a walk around, check out some of these buildings. And yeah, to let you know, this was of course the front of the house. And at the time it faced the St. John's River, which is kind of silted up and it's just kind of marshlands. If you can see kind of the trees on the other side of that open field. Um, actually, let me walk around. I see this plaque. I'll just take a quick look at that. Yeah. And to tell you a little bit about John Dickinson, and this was his boyhood home. He lived here from age eight to about 18 when he went off to England to be educated. And he was another one of those kind of reluctant revolutionaries. Um, well, he believed that we should separate from England, but he thought at the time of the revolution uh, that we weren't ready. So he didn't sign the Declaration of Independence, although he did sign the Constitution. And all right, so the, why the mansion faces south, I'm sure it's gonna tell you because of the river that just flows into the bay. And yeah, you can pause and read Jones Neck. Hey, what is this? Kingston Upton Hall's historic house leased by Samuel Dickinson. Yeah, father. And whoops. All right. Yeah, you're not supposed to go past that uh, that sign right there. Yeah, another shot from far away. Yeah, so John Dickinson didn't sign the Declaration of Independence. He, uh, he was uh, known as the penman of the revolution. He wrote uh, the Olive Branch petition uh, that we had sent to King George as one last ditch effort to work things out. King George pretty much never read it through in the trash can, but John Dickinson wrote that. He also wrote uh, letters from a Pennsylvania farmer, which was a popular write up at the time. It was into response to the Townsend Acts, uh, tax on, on newly arriving goods. So he was kind of a behind the scenes uh, type guy, I guess you would say. So yeah, he did he did own this uh, house later in life, but didn't come out much. He also owned a home in Philadelphia and uh, one in Wilmington. And those, he was out there more often. All right, so the granary over here. And that's cool, you can walk inside. I'll let you pause and read if you wanna read this little write up. The grain, yeah, Saxon bins, hard to store because of fly infestation. All right, uh, so they've got some tools. 
the incline plane. Just a, a ramp for chickens. <laughs> what is this thing? The wheel and axe. Da -da 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 -da. Now press over here and the screw. Yeah, it's kind of auger. Uh, talking about Isaac Newton. Okay, it's the kind of a pulley system over here. And yeah, some woodworking tools. Hmm. All right. And yeah, we're not too far from Route 1 over there. All right, so a big feed barn over here. And yeah, looks like they're still growing something over there. Oh, to tell you all together, John Dickinson had about 55 slaves and he freed his slaves in the 1780s. And yeah, you don't really think of Delaware as a slave state, but they were actually one of the last states to end slavery. A lot of people think Juneteenth is the end of slavery. And it's a great idea for a holiday, the end, the end of slavery. But that was the end of slavery in the Confederacy uh, down there, of course, in Texas, uh, <laughs> Juneteenth of 1865. But it wasn't until the 13th Amendment was ratified uh, towards the end of uh, 1865 that pretty good shy. Yeah, again, you can see this kind of a hand uh, the, the windows aren't um, aren't uh, aren't matching up yeah so uh yeah maryland delaware i guess kentucky missouri it was uh after june it was the end of 65 that they ended slavery when uh yeah 13th amendment was uh ratified oh right, yeah of course you got your corn crib um well you kind of probably a storage area up there. It's pretty neat how they uh, didn't have nails. They, that's how they fasten those. Huh, what type of tree is this? Uh, I guess if somebody knows, let me know in the comments. Okay, over here, we're gonna have another barn. Yeah, I don't know, I always like to check out these uh, hinges, these homemade hinges on, on these doors. Shot of the back, Magnolia over here. And yeah, you, you don't really think Delaware, Mag, uh, Magnolias, but okay, stable. All right, horse stable over here. And some sort of mill race over here, or just canal ditch. Don't. Okay, so good shot of the back. Oh yeah, to tell you one of the reasons John Dickinson did free his slaves, his father, Samuel Dickinson, was a Quaker, although he was disavowed because he let his daughter marry a non-Quaker. So he was booted, but John followed the Quaker principles, uh, especially later in life. That's why he began freeing his slaves in the 1770s and then just full on just emancipation, 1780s. And wow, no windows at all on the, on the left there. And it almost looks like there was something just, I don't know, the darkness of the bricks. Uh, I don't know if there was something attached to that, but oh, all right. So yeah, another Magnolia There's over there see what this thing is oh yeah okay smokehouse and probably have some meats hanging down yeah you've got kind of a charred smell in here okay some hooks okay so I'll walk over here Maybe that was a horse tie up. Oh, to tell you about a quarter mile behind me is the Welcome Center, also a little museum. I'm gonna check that out uh, on my way uh, out of here. I think this is gonna be the last outbuilding.
And if you're ever in Dover, you can also take a tour of the State House uh, downtown. I'm not sure I'm gonna have time today, but next time I'm up here, I'm, I'm gonna check it out. Okay, so a logged dwelling, a little fire pit. Part of a wheelbarrow or something. All right, this building represents the type of house you use for, okay, it's a slave house. One room structure, no wood flooring. Okay, so this is a slave house. Kind of a little bed right there. Fireplace. Uh, stick the camera in here. And then back there, it looks like we've got just a little garden. I guess it's the slave's garden. And, okay, I think you can walk in uh, over there. Oh, something pretty neat I can tell you guys. A couple of weeks ago, I had a guy approach me. He was with some marketing firm and he, they asked if they could purchase some of my drone footage. I was up here almost exactly a year ago. I made a video on the Fenwick Lighthouse, Southern Delaware. Uh, he asked, he, he offered to buy my, I sold him my drone footage and he said it's gonna be in a commercial in a few weeks. And he said he's gonna send me a link. So just, I don't know, kind of, kind of neat. <laughs> my uh, drone footage will be in a commercial, but it's just gonna be kind of local to the Delaware area. Okay. All right, yeah, just take a quick walk. Uh, just a uh, yeah, typical garden, lettuce, uh, peppers. Well, uh, these uh, marigolds, you can smell them. Whew. All right. Yeah, just kind of herbs and vegetables, tomatoes, yeah. So, yeah, small little garden. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna walk up and just uh, take a look at the museum. I'm gonna walk and check out the cemetery. I'd forgotten. Yeah, right behind the house. And yeah, I was headed back to uh, to the museum. Saw this sitting over here. Looks like a pretty nice place to relax over there. I see some benches. But yeah, Samuel Dickinson, his father, died 1760. Okay, so it's just his father then it looks like, but uh, pretty nice, well-kept. Uh, Yep, there it is. Okay, I can see it's Samuel Dickinson, uh, 1760. Okay, the day he died. It's on there. Okay, well, there's his father's uh, grave. Whew. Okay, yeah, so the visitor center slash museum is right there. So like I say, it's not far at all. I'll just kind of cut through this field. Yeah, beautiful day. It's not too hot. It's nice out here. And yeah, I always like to get to these places early, uh, kind of beat the crowd, and you get more of a one-on-one -on -one with the uh, with the guide. So, and that guy was really good. He was telling me about other places to, to visit in Delaware. Told me about the State House downtown, uh, some places in Newcastle. So, yeah, great myrtles in bloom.
right, I'm getting out of here. That's it for the John Dickinson house. Uh, see you back in Virginia. As always, like and subscribe. And if you want to help me get out to more of these places, you can support me on Patreon. Uh, if you can't do that, uh, hit the like button, leave a comment. Uh, all that helps uh, push me out in the algorithm, get my videos out there. Anyway, see you guys.